Now we previously touched upon this topic when we last left, which is mixing paradigms, choosing which paradigm is best for a certain part of your application. And I also want to prove this by showing you that your mind works with two different paradigms. Now, most of your applications will use procedural or OOP. You may find that you'll run into functional programming, but not as often as procedural and assembly, not really, not for large scale applications. We like our subroutines, we like our instructions, and we like things to be object oriented because typically our applications are to do with the real world and real users. So what we want to do now is we want to take a look at how your mind actually works. Well, your mind has multiple paradigms of programming. It has different instructions and subroutines, for example, making a cup of coffee and so forth. So let's say that you walk into a room. Now, what is your mind doing at that point? Is it object oriented? The answer is no, you're not actually working with an object. Your mind is procedural. It's working through a set of subroutines. It's trying to find out what is it going to do next. It's doing some kind of analysis. So for example, it's looking around the room. Let's say you looking around your living room. You're looking at all these different objects, but you are not working with an object. You are analyzing what you're going to do next. Maybe you're looking at the time. Maybe you've got to go off to work. Maybe in the morning you like to do certain things in the morning, the morning routine, as we say, or your subroutine for the morning, pack up sandwiches, something like that. I don't know. But the point is you're looking around the room at all these objects and your mind is procedurally going through. What is the time? What am I doing? What do I need to do next? Are there important jobs to do first? Or can I relax a little bit and watch telly? So forth. So it's working through subroutines. It's working through instructions. You could even say it could be assembling itself. It could be an assembly paradigm, but usually it's working through a set of subroutines. So we'll say that your mind is in procedural but then your mind has to make a decision. Otherwise you're just going to stand there looking at everything and eventually you're just going to do nothing until night falls and then you've got to go to bed. So it's going to pick something to do within the room. So let's say it looks at the television. It's analyzed. I've got time. Perfect. I can just relax now. So it's going to analyze the whole room and then it's going to say, right, I'm going to work with the television. Now the television is an object. It has properties that describe it and it has methods that also allow us to work with and perform actions with this particular object. So as soon as we go and decide what we're going to do, we go into the OOP paradigm, the object oriented paradigm, if you will. So now we switch the telly on, we run that method. And then of course the guide comes up. Now, what are we doing there? Are we in OOP? or are we in procedural? I believe we're in procedural at this point because the guides come up. Because now you've got to analyze all these different channels, all this different data, and you've got to find out what you like and the length of time this program is on. You know, if the program's about to end in five minutes, you don't want to watch that. You may want to go to the next channel that's plus one and so forth. So you're analyzing all of this data inside of your mind. So you're back to procedural again. So you flip flop. Procedural, OOP, procedural, and then once you've decided, you grab the remote. Now, what is your mindset? Well, it's going to be OOP. You've made your decision. So now you're going to click the button to go to that particular channel or type that number in. And of course, a remote is an object. It has properties to describe it and methods for all of the different buttons on the remote. So hopefully now you can see that saying one paradigm fits all is incorrect. We need to choose the right paradigm at the right time. And that's all about the skill of becoming a programmer. So for example, object oriented programming, that paradigm is actually supposed to be the easiest because we're working with objects. They're supposed to be obvious for what they are, whether it be a register of values such as an array or whether they be objects that we're working with. It is supposed to be easier because, for example, when I'm working with my television at home and I go over to my friend's house and he has a television, well, it's the television type object. I have a basic understanding of how a television works. 
and also my remote compared to my friend's remote, and my car compared to my friend's car or my neighbor's car. I have an idea of how these types of objects work. So OOP is supposed to be the most simplistic. But be warned, don't try to take object-oriented programming and then convert that into the procedural style. If you try to do that, you will be adding even more confusion. Procedural programming and functional programming and assembly programming are actually supposed to be more difficult. They are designed that way because they suit a different purpose. That's like trying to map out our mind, for example, with all the different subroutines we have and all the different questions we ask ourselves. So that's more procedural, changing what we think in the state of mind that we're in. So trying to take the object-oriented approach when it comes to your mind isn't going to work. You'll actually make it more complicated. But don't make the mistake that OOP is simplistic, so I'll stick with that paradigm. Procedural programming is more difficult for a reason. Functional programming is more difficult for a reason. And by applying or misapplying the wrong paradigm, you could make your life a lot harder. And I have found that now applications are gradually levitating towards procedural and trying to use OOP as the bare minimum. When they've got to work with objects, then go to OOP. That was what it was designed for, and that's what we need it for. Object.